Okay, so we're going to continue our discussion on high-pass filters. So recall from our last lesson here that we had a high-pass filter um, with a capacitor and well, why am I drawing an inductor there? And a resistor. Uh, and the output was taken across the resistor. And the input was taken across the, uh, well, the input was the voltage, duh. And see here. And then the cutoff frequency we had was 1 over RC. And then my transfer function that we got was S over S plus 1 over RC. And then when we ended the video we made the comment here um, that was very important was that if we get a transfer function in the form of S over S plus A that's going to be a high pass filter. It's first order because we're looking at first orders right now um, and that this was going to then uh, have a cutoff frequency equaling A. So Let's go ahead and look at the other kind of high pass filter that we have that we're going to look at right now. And um, you might guess what it's going to be because it's involving a uh, resistor and inductor. And it's exactly the same where we're going to swap the location of the components. And so this is going to be my resistor. This is my inductor. This is V in plus minus V out. So I claim this is a high pass filter. Now there's an easy way to verify that claim and the way to do that is just to compute what the transfer function is. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we take a Laplace transform so this would be S times L. Of course, this just stays as R. And then V out, just doing voltage division, would be S times L over R plus S times L times V in. And so then my transfer function is just S times L over S times L plus R and just like we did before, we'll multiply this by 1 over L. And we can kind of already see that, yeah, we're going to be getting a high pass filter here because my transfer function here becomes S over S plus R over L. And so this is in the form S over S plus A. And my OneNote just crashed, I think. So let me open it back up. And it lost everything we had there. So let us just, um, it's not responding. There we go. I am just going to go ahead and skip back to where we were. Um, actually, so we have form here, S over S plus A, and then omega C was R over L. And so there's really not much else to, to talk about in this, in this discussion here. And again, notice that we didn't go through the whole computation like we did with the RC, where we, we said, okay, well, you know, I need to do the magnitude of H at J omega and everything. We use this idea that when we have a transfer function in the form of S over S plus A, that's going to be a high pass filter with a cutoff frequency um, equal to A. So let's look at an example here with this. Um, the low pass filter example we did was an RC circuit. So let's look at an high pass RL filter. Design a high pass RL filter with, in this case, we'll make it um, 
omega c equaling 10,000 kilorads, not kilorads, 10,000 rads per second, or 10 kilorads per second. Now remember, we always have to be careful. If given FC, you need to compute omega C, um, which is equal to 2 pi FC. Okay, so just remember when a problem you're looking at, um, you have to be careful with this. Now, this is, a, this is the problem. There's nothing else that we're going to be given for this problem. Now notice that in this particular design problem, I didn't give you any values for the resistor and inductor. And so what it is is you have to de decide what they should be. But we have to make some what I would call reasonable choices here. For instance, um, if we picked R to be like 10 ohms, that is not, I mean, it's not that you can't get 10 ohm resistors, but that might, that is not um, a, quote, standard value. Um, and, and it is um, a standard value, but you have to be careful, because sometimes if you pick something too small, like, for instance, depending on the size of the inductor, then you get, you know, that 10 ohms, you might have more resistance in your wires or in the coil of the inductor um, than the resistance you chose. So your value for the resistance isn't going to work anyway because your cutoff, you know, your equivalent resistance for the circuit is going to be much higher than 10 ohms because you're going to have that resistance in the coil plus any wires that are attached to it. So, so we have to be careful sometimes when we pick small values like that. Um, because coils absolutely have resistance in them. Um, and so that could be an issue with it. So if we pick a higher value for a resistor. That means we can ignore some of those other resistors. Like for instance, if we picked, uh, you know, let's just for an example say 100 kilo ohm, you know, we could ignore coil resistance. But then we also have a problem with that. If I pick a 100 kilo ohm, the size of inductor I might need might be unreasonably large. And so let's look at that here. And this is where you have to kind of do some playing around and, and say, well, what's good and what's not? And how do you know? Well, some of this is just going to take experience. Um, but the general rule of thumb is, you know, we want to make sure these are somewhat reasonable values, like capacitors. You know, you don't really want something above microfarad range in the capacitors. Um, you know, even though you can get capacitors in that value range, um, typically for a filter, we wouldn't be doing that. Um, and then, you know, you probably wouldn't go want to go less than even picofarad. Um, because in the picofarad range, you know, if you go any lower than that, you're going to have stray capacitances just in your boards that are going to affect the circuits. Um, and in fact, if you're talking about doing something on a breadboard, you really shouldn't do picofarads because you have par um, parasitic capacitances all over the place on a breadboard. So you'd want it being more in the nanofarad range. And inductors, well, if you look in the lab, some of the standard inductors we have are microhenry inductors, um, and we do have some millihenry inductors. So we don't want to really go much bigger or smaller than those either. You know, so we have millihenry to microhenry inductors. So we want to kind of stay in that range as far as our values for inductors as well. So, and then of course resistors we have all over the place. But we do have to keep in mind if if we pick something really small, you have. Um, parasitic resistances that might affect your cutoff frequency. Um, and then too big, which we have definitely, um, might mean that the inductor is too big. So for instance, let's just say, and sometimes you have to do a, you know, uh, design and recheck, and, but I'll show you that there's some kind of 
interesting scaling things you can just do here. So remember here, let's, let's go ahead and start tackling this. Omega C is equal to R over L, which needs to be 10,000. Okay, so if I were to pick, you know, let's say we picked R to be 100 kilo ohms. So if I picked R to be 100 kilo ohms, um, well, then I'd have 100,000 over L is equal to 10,000. Which, as we said, that, that's a pretty, um, if we solve for L then, L would simply be 10 Henry's. But this is, this is a large value for an inductor. And it's not saying that you can't find a 10 Henry inductor. Um, you can find 10 Henry inductors, I'm sure, um, but they're going to be for specialized applications, not typically used for like a uh, first order high pass filter. So we're saying, okay, well, you know, that 100,000 kilo ohm resistor isn't, isn't the right size. But what you can do now is you can kind of do some scaling, saying, okay, I need this to be something a little bit more reasonable. So let's scale it down. to 100 millihenries, which we do have 100 millihenry inductors um, in the lab, by the way. Um, so let's scale it down to 100 millihenries. So to scale that down to 100 millihenries, we would need to divide L by 100, because 10 divided by 100 is 0.1, which is 100 milli. Okay, but then let's look at my cutoff frequency here. It's R over L. And so now, what did I do here? Is I multiplied, I, well, I multiplied L by 1 over 100, so I divided it by 100. So if you do that to the denominator, you have to do it to the numerator as well. So we do 100,000 divided by 100, which would just be 1,000 which is one kilo ohm. And of course, that's doing the scaling. Um, and so we get R being one kilo ohm and L being 100 millihenries. Now, there is definitely gonna be some parasitic resistance in this. Um, the parasitic resistance on some of my inductors in the lab, I think um, when I measured them a couple weeks ago, um, one of them was like at 80 ohms for this 100 millihenry inductor. Um, so there's definitely parasitics there, but 80 ohms compared to one kilo ohm is still relatively small. Again, remembering that these one kilo ohm resistors are gonna have a tolerance anyway, 5% um, tolerance most likely, or 1% depending on the value. So that 80 ohms is not gonna have a significant impact on that. But there is a way to simulate that, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, so, um, our design would end up being here. Now you don't have to use the scaling method that I just did here, by the way. You could just pick a different value for the inductor um, and just solve it. So what I mean by that? Well, we have L here, R here, whoops. Um, actually, I'll label these with what their values are. So 100 millihenry, one kilo ohm, uh, this is plus minus V out, Vn. Now, as I said, you don't have to do the scaling. You could have instead saying, okay, well, you know, first trial didn't work. And so maybe for the second attempt, instead of choosing the resistor, we'll choose the inductor to be 100 millihenry. Then 10,000 is equal to R over 100, 
milli Henry, and you still get R is equal to one kilo ohm. So you don't technically have to do the, the scaling method. You can quote do the guess and check method. I like the scaling method just because I just I, I do an initial kind of okay, I'm gonna maybe guess these parameters that seem like they might be reasonable and then if I don't get it I just scale um, them properly. But you have to make sure you scale properly based off of what the formula is for omega C. Um, because when you scale like for instance an RC circuit um, if you multiply one of the components you divide the other because of the way it is um, the, the equation is. Now let's end this video by saying how could you simulate this with parasitic resistance. So an example here, what we're going to do here is we're going to have an example. We're not going to actually do the simulation here. I'm just going to show you the circuit you would draw here. Um, we want to simulate a high pass Excuse me, I don't know if that came through. I just sneezed there. High pass filter with R equals 1 kilo ohm, L equals 100 millihenry, and L has a parasitic resistance. of 80 ohms. So to simulate this circuit what we would do is we would put into our simulator the following thing. You know we'd have our voltage source here. We'd have our 1 kilo ohm resistor and then you'd put in an 80 ohm resistor and then a 100 millihenry inductor. And that will simulate the parasitic resistances. Now, what I often do when I do this kind of simulation here, then the output voltage, as a side note, the output voltage would be taken across the entire thing there. It would be, V out would be including the 80 ohm resistor and the 100 millihenry inductor. That would be V out. And the other thing I like to do in the simulator, you can draw these boxes, um, is draw a box around it, maybe a dotted box, and you could say this is the inductor. And the reason I like doing that is that if you're thinking about building the circuit, sometimes people then when they see the circuit um, from a simulation, they're like, oh, well, I've got to get a 1 kilo ohm resistor and an 80, uh, 80 ohm um, resistor. No, you just get the 1 kilo ohm resistor and the 100 millihenry inductor, this 80 ohm here, this is purely for simulation purposes. Okay, um, so that's how you can do things like that. All right, but that's gonna end the video here. Um, and we're actually gonna move on to higher order filters next.